Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social, welcome to Malaga, welcome to the launch of Husqvarna's new 401 Smart Pilling and Vip Pilling. Now when I say sunny Malaga, I'm kind of lying a bit because it's been absolutely freezing today and really, really cold. But it has given us a real world opportunity to test both models. So last night in the presentation, we had a huge explanation of what Husqvarna have done. And it's a big transformation. Now if you look at this bike and compare it to the previous one, you'll instantly see the differences, the complete different rear end. So now we've got the grab rail with a number plate on the back where it used to hang around the back wheel. The rear shock has moved to this side, it used to be centrally mounted. The front brake is now on the right side, it used to be on the left side. We've got complete WP suspension, front and rear. Interesting what they've done with the suspension is, they've just given it five clicks, because they know that this bike is gonna to appeal to new riders. So instead of having like 30 or 40 different clips where you can get really confused, from zero to five clicks is zero to maximum. So just one click makes a huge difference. And obviously we've got adjustment on the front and we've got some adjustment on the rear. We've got more tech, we've more connectivity, we've got new full colour clocks and we've got more rider aids. So we've got cornering ABS, we've got cornering traction control and we've got two rider modes um, which is both rain and road and we've got an up and down quick shifter as standard. Now when you make that list, that is a sizeable list. So what do you think the price is? Maybe seven, maybe eight thousand pounds? No, it's under six. It's only, on PCP in the UK, £120 a month. It's only £20 more a month than a 125. They've also increased the capacity of the engine slightly, so we're right on the limit of an A2 licence. It's 45 horsepower, right on the cusp of the power-to-weight limit. And we've had the opportunity here in Malaga to have some kind of fun, but to be honest, it has been pretty cold and it has been pretty grim. But in the rain mode, you can feel that the power is reduced. You've got cornering ABS, you've got cornering traction control, and there were moments when you're braking quite steeply into downhill corners where I was relying on that ABS. But it's not intrusive, it's just there as like a, as a big safety net. Even for experienced riders like myself, it was hard to get to the limitations of the ABS. You could feel it a little bit on the rear, but not on the front. And I think that's gonna be so beneficial for new riders. For those who are a little bit more experienced, you can put the ABS into a supermoto mode which basically means you've got ABS on the front, but no ABS on the rear, so you can slide it, do skids, impress your mates. Equally, with the traction control, you can have that active, or you can turn it off and turn it back on again whilst you're on the move. If you turn the traction control off and you're vicious with the clutch, it'll pull wheelies, it's got enough poke to show off and have some fun. The kind of big elephant in the room, as much as I'm loving this bike and loving the presentation last night, is I went to a presentation around a month ago where KTM launched the 390, and essentially, Underneath all this is a KTM 390. But that's a good thing, not a bad thing, because that's an exceptional A2 bike. But this is not just uh, a mannequin in a different frock. This is not just uh, a different painting of the same picture. It feels like a very different bike. And by that, what I mean is the seat is much wider. It's uh, softer. The suspension is a little bit softer. The riding position is very different. It feels kind of grown up. It feels a little bit more civilized. It feels a little bit more mature. I'd even argue it's possibly easier to ride because it just feels a little bit more manageable. It feels a little softer. You get a little bit more feeling through the chassis. And especially with the Pirelli rubber. I really, really like the Pirelli rubber. They gave a lot of feel in the really tricky conditions we had today. The Michelins are good tires, but when I rode the 390 the other week, they were brilliant in the cold. And today there was a few little moments, but they did perform above my expectations. But the Pirellis were exceptional. And I guess that's what it's come down to. It's just going to come down to what you want in an image and what you want from an A2 bike. So welcome to, oh look, that's Gavana. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we are on the launch of the Smart Pillin and Vip Pillin, new for 2024 and completely new model compared to the outgoing Smart Pillin and Vip Pillin. So engine goes up in capacity, more power, more torque, but it's right on the A2 limit of weight and uh, power. Big, big changes cosmetically, 
it feels already bigger than the outgoing model. The dimensions have kind of increased. You can tell by the bike in front of us. I mean, look at the size of that pillion seat. That's like a 650 pillion seat. Oh, thank you. So as you can tell, you've got the... That is the spark pillion. I'm on the VIT. So you've got that little kind of uh, grab rail, which it looks a little bit like an old CBR 600 grab rail. You've got the spoked wheels and the Pirelli off-road kind of looking rubber. The bars are a little bit higher. Uh, so it's more cosmetic and different wheels and different tyres. This has got Michelin rubber and lighter wheels. So I think the difference is about five or six kilograms between the two, which is mainly down to the wheels, the weight of the tyres and then a few of the bracketry cosmetic -y bits that that bike's got over this bike can't believe the weather so I've been in down in Malaga for about a bloody month and it's been beautiful and then now in the southern Spain where apparently it never rains according to the tourism it's bloody raining and we're going up towards Ronda on some very steep thousand feet or is it a thousand meters I can't remember Oop. knock it back again make it have it oh he's in the dash light up so to say it's a little bit grim would be an understatement a proper understatement but it did give us a bit of an opportunity to just play around with the bike um, obviously it's heavily based on the KTM new 390 Duke but it's much bigger much roomier so it feels more spacious it feels more like a a real motorcycle without being insulting to the KTM um, feels a lot lot bigger more roomier the seat is way comfier there's no ambient temperature on the dash so yeah that's a little bit I don't know why I like that but I do like ambient temperatures on dashboards uh, so as you can probably tell by the rivers of water running past my piss wet feet this is good oh the liner inside my gloves is all knotted my feet are freezing never has a citron whatever the shitty thing that is has looked so attractive Now I think there's going to be people who are under 25 who have already written off Husqvarna. They just want the KTM because they grew up on KTM motocross bikes. They're watching KTM in MotoGP. And like my son just loves KTM because of the image and because of the brand. Turn off the TC, have some sideways fun and that's fine. You've got a brilliant bike. But if you want something that's a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more civilised, in my opinion, looks a little bit better, but still got all those excellent qualities, then it's the Husqvarna. Bike. Which just leaves you one question which one you're going to go for, smart pulling or VIT pulling. If it was me, I'd prefer the spoked wheels, Pirelli rubber, go for the one on the left. Mm -hmm.